<laughs> oh, kia ora and malo, everybody. Welcome back to this Move, Sweat and Suffer podcast. Both Lee Hazard and I are privileged to have our special guest today, Mr. Elijah Nico, professional rugby player. And um, I'm gonna, we're not going to say too much more, Lee and I, at this stage. What we would like to do is uh, hand over some time to Elijah to introduce himself to our audience, and uh, then we'll bounce and roll from there and get to know him a bit better. So over to you, Lige. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Lee, for having me on the on the podcast. Okay, so my name's uh, Elijah Nico, 31 years young, uh, New Zealand-born Kiwi Samoan, and um, man, just enjoying life. You know how it is. Uh, uh, grew up, obviously, did grew up in New Zealand, did all my schooling there. Uh, when I was about, I obviously started my my rugby, my professional rugby career in New Zealand and then uh, Australia. And when I was about 22 years old, I made the big jump and uh, did uh, play my uh, rugby trade in uh, France for seven years and then uh, England for two years. And now I'm back in France. So uh, it's been a whirlwind uh, experience for me. But, uh, you know, I'm just enjoying the process, mate. Just living the dream. I'm living the dream. Awesome, <laughs> awesome bro. Sounds like it. And um, just before we uh, crack into things um, more around the burpees and that sort of stuff in your journey, uh-huh. what position are you playing, bro? You centres, fly half, wing? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I play, um, I started my career as a, oh, this is quite funny, mate. I was a rugby league player first and I was actually a prop. Oh. So at the, when I was at the Warriors, I was a prop. Yeah, I was. And then, yeah. um, and then uh, one day, uh, and I was a fast prop, by the way, so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was quite quick for for a prop. So one day there was a, a winger. We were out of wingers for some reason, and, and coach asked me, um, "Oh, you want to have a go at the wing?" So I was like, "Yeah, sweet." So then uh, I played that my first game as a winger in rugby league, and then ever since I've just been a back. So I play between a, a winger and a centre now. So even in union, I'm I'm in the back. So uh, you know, going from the big boys to the yeah. Fast boys, I guess. So, yeah. So, I've been in the backs ever since. So, I'm a centre winger. Mm. Centre winger, man. Awesome. <laughs> right, appreciate that, bro. And so, um, Mr. Hazard, you got anything you want to ask first before I carry on? I don't want to hog all the, uh, the, the questions with Elijah. No, I'm, I'm just a bit overawed right now because I'm in the presence of two really honky Kiwis here. <laughs> Whereas, I look, I, look like, I look like a fucking dwarf warrior for Lord uh, of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna to have to bear with me here, but no, I mean, like my my rugby knowledge is extremely limited, which is quite surprising for someone from Scotland because rugby is a really big game here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like one thing that jumps out at me as well is I actually in my line of work, I used to work in a, a, a stadium which was the stadium for a well-known rugby team in Glasgow, the Glasgow Warriors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always got to see the rugby players train up front, close and personal. And one thing that just jumps out at me is, is are you actually like, what is your team's viewpoint with regards to your training schedule outside of the one day program for you? Like with high rep burpees and so forth, how how do they view that training style? Well, it's a different, it's, yeah, that's a good question actually. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I normally on uh, days off because our training schedules is quite hectic. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd say it's kind of like a nine to five in a way, but uh, we usually sort of get into training at about 8.30 ish, have team breakfast, then we'll get into units, bit of video, gym in the mornings, and then sort of in the afternoon we'll do team sessions. So mm. we, we'll be done about three, three, four ish. But I usually like. Um, Normally in the days off, that's when I would do my burpees. So, um, right. and, and sometimes even if I feel good after training, I'll probably do it like late at night. I'll, I'll do, you know, a burpees workout here and there. But um, no, I just, I just, I just fit into, I just fit the, my, my schedule into it, my own trainings. I just do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I would, um, sorry, carry on. I was just, <laughs> I was always under the impression that, like your strength and conditioning team or a strength and conditioning team would uh-huh. they would want you to be exclusive to the program they've designed for you and obviously for injury prevention and things related to that nature would they want you to just sort of limit that exposure to that training just to keep uh, you fresh 
Man, traditionally, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, man, I'm up to I'm up to that stage now. <laughs> Just being a bit of a veteran now, mate. That I I know my yeah. body well. Yeah. You know, um, I, I feel like I'm experienced enough to know if I'm doing too much or if I'm doing less or whatever, but. You know, I just feel good, man. Like, oh, I just do it. If I feel like I can do it, then I'll do it. Yeah. You know? So, Has there been any carryover from the burpees to your actual like performance on the field? Uh, no, nah, not really, mate. The reason being is that um, I make sure that I recover well. Um, I eat well. That's that's like a main, main point that I always stress is that I always make sure that I recover well. Like, um, you know, do ice baths, stretching, uh, I do that every every morning. I do yoga early morning. That's my routine. When I wake yeah. up, yeah. I wake up at about five thirty in the morning. This is something about the morning that my brain and my senses are like alive. So yeah. I, I wake up in the morning. First thing I do is I stretch. I meditate a bit. I listen to podcasts, and then I'm, I set myself for the day, mm-hmm. and then I feel good. And then at night time, before I go to bed, I stretch again, and I just uh, make sure that recovery is on top of that. So. Man, I just feel good, eh? I, I'm, you know, everyone's different, but uh, you know, I can only speak on a personal view. But uh, man, I feel good, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have you got any of your teammates doing puppies? Mate, it's a funny thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in rugby, mate, burpees is like a punishment. Uh, Joe will probably know. Like, if you drop a ball or something in training, then the coach will make you do like ten or twenty burpees, man. Like, it's. That's what we, we used to see it as. That's what I used to see it as, you know? Yeah. The dreaded, but, um, the dreaded movement. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So every time you drop a ball, do something bad, the coach will say, Oi, 10, 20 burpees. He'll be like, ah, you know, F, and then we'll do it. Um, but yeah, look, um, ever since I started doing it, um, man, I've got a few of the boys uh, um, jumping on board as well. You know, I've, I've received wow. a lot of messages and everything and like like the rugby boys they all want to, they're all yeah. starting to get onto it too so it's, it's awesome. quite it's quite good that yeah to see that mate yeah brilliant, how brilliant long have mate. you been doing it for how long have you been doing the burpees for like consistently for you aside from the punishments from training and things like that but uh more yeah more so in what you do now in your off days and that sort of stuff mate, it's been doing. um how long has it been now since since the first lockdown last year True. So it's yeah, been, yeah, got a bit of a story yeah. about that too, man. How it started. Yeah. Um. So like, um. Obviously, I think um, Lee will probably probably know. Um. UK. We went on lockdown in March 2020. I think that was the first one. Mm. So um, you know, by then I was uh, man, I was I couldn't go back home, mate. Couldn't go back to New Zealand because they closed the borders. Um. Mm. I was actually waiting on my UK visa as well. So then I handed in my when you apply for your UK visa got a hand in your passport That's so cool. so yeah. i did that and um then just a collection of visa um freaking bad timings and all that just happened in one go the season yeah. suddenly stopped as well when they announced the lockdown so rugby we went from training and playing to all of a sudden no rugby because of the lockdown think, and stuff yeah so then um man so i was like stuck i couldn't go back home to new zealand i couldn't go to france had no visa so I was pretty much an overstay in uh, UK for the first lockdown. <laughs> and then uh, and I was like, one night I was like, man, because I'm, you know, I'm a, I love to do a bit of challenges and, you know, I love training. I, I love doing that. Yeah. So then one night I was just like, I needed something to keep me sane, man, because like Lee, Lee will understand um, the first mm-hmm. lockdown, the first week or two was hard, man. Like you're going from being with everyone out there to, being like in a prison, you know, you can't, you can only go out to get supplies or something like that. So yeah. then one night I was just scrolling through fitness videos on YouTube and stuff. Mm. And then I came across a guy called Iron Wolf. <laughs> and mate, that completely changed my life, man. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? This guy is awesome. And then obviously I saw his um, burpees and I was like, man, I'm like, this is, this is going to be my new, new challenge, you know, doing burpees awesome. and stuff like that. And I was like, um, you know, I'm, I'm a Polynesian, man. I'm a Pacific Islander, man. We don't even really like running and fitness, man, let alone do burpees. <laughs> <laughs> so then I made a goal for myself. I actually wrote it down. I said, um, in like six months' time, I'm going to be able to do 500 burpees. That was my, my goal during a lockdown. Yeah. So then, um, man, that was – everything just went 
bang, that was my new training regime. And then from then on, I just started doing burpees. I started from 100 burpees trying to do it because I wasn't good, man. I, I would do probably 20 and I'll puff out. So then I, I'd start. You're not alone yeah, in that. you got to learn, you know. Yeah, you got to work up. To it. So I just went straight 100. And then, you know, as the weeks went on, I just started getting better and better consistently. Mm. And then, um, man, and then uh, six months, I think it was in October, um, that's when I finally reached the 500 burpee mark in under an hour. And um, there was like a, I mean, like, you know, when you come from rugby and you win games and win titles and things like that, but this yeah. this hit me different. You know, it's <laughs> the first time I've done something um, that's kind of not like it was with other team players, but this was like yeah. a personal thing. Mm. And then when I hit that 500, man, I was like so proud. I was so happy, like. I mean, like you know, just to do it because oh. it's, doing burpees is not just a physical thing, man. It's like a, it's like a mental thing, um, and and it just like the, the the happiness. I think Lee, you would understand what I'm talking about, man. It's hard to put into words, but um, just the journey of doing it, man. It's absolutely it's amazing. Mm. Well, I think that's it's very profound that you you've compared it to winning at like a championship or a title or a cup yeah. and so forth because obviously these are the pinnacle of a sporting career, whereas. <laughs> exactly. Then 500 burpees in a fucking hotel room is a better accomplishment <laughs> in some respects. Exactly. Man. <laughs> and, um, you know, the other thing, like, you know, the more you do it, of course you get better, you get stronger, but every mm. time you do it, you're still going to be effed afterwards. Yeah, without yeah. a doubt, it's still going to, like, make you 100%. tired and, and things like that. So that's what I love about it. It continues, you know, the challenge carries on and on and on. So... You know, it's 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 great. It's great. Mm. That's awesome. And how's that? How's that been mentally for you? Have you noticed a difference? Because it's that's a it's a big mental challenge for anybody. Uh -huh. Even to do fifty or a hundred, let yeah, alone five hundred. Sure. Have you found any sort of um, that mental carryover, that mental strength, that mental toughness into your rugby, into your professional sporting? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, you know, like um, obviously, like I always felt that um, doing doing burpees is obviously tough. The sort of the mental side of it is, you know, that's that's another level. When you can sort of master that, like you can take you anywhere, man. Like for example, I do when I get up to the, I'd say one fifty two hundred mark on the burpees, and that's then after that, man, that's that's all in here, man. That's, that's, that's all in your ticker, and that's all in in, in your mind. And yeah. you're just you're just freaking on autopilot, you know. And you just, for me, I just feel like I'm just controlling it with my mind, and I'm just going with it, you know. I, yeah, I'm tired and everything. I'm physically tired, but in my head, and that, and that takes when I transfer that onto the rugby field. Mm -hmm. um, there are moments in, in in rugby, I'd say, like in the 65th, 70, 75th minute. That's when you're when you're tired. That's when everything you know goes out the window and stuff. And that's when that mental character comes into play. That's when the mm. your heart comes into play. That's when your mental toughness comes into play. So I I credit a lot of the, the burpees workout and the mental side of that. And that's certainly helped me um, into rugby as well. So I, I credit that a lot. And it's done wonders for me, you know. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's great. It's what it's done for me. It's done, it's done me wonders, yeah, for sure. Mm. It's definitely interesting to hear that for a sporting perspective. Because mm -hmm. most of us do this like recreational. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, like there's a mental carryover to like life, so forth. But to actually apply it in a, a high exactly. pressure situation, it's very interesting to hear you say that. Yeah, and it, and it obviously it can make us sell burpees a bit more effectively because it's a hard sell burpees. Exactly, yeah, exactly. a hard sell. Which, you, which it's, sorry, it's the most like I think it's so underrated. And um, you know, I, and I, and I'm like um, like you guys, you know. I'm I'm even on my Instagram, and now I promote it, you know. And I and I want to express what burpees mean, not just in the physical aspect, but like in the mental um, car uh, aspect as well. So I I, I freaking think that it should be uh, it should have a lot of credit towards it, to be honest, because um, you know, burpees is a whole body workout. Um, and fuck, it's just, you know, you can just tell by my expression how much I love it. <laughs> what, do you think about, uh, what do you think of the idea of it being compulsory in schools? Freaking oath. 
<laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I got some friends that are teachers. Uh, I should tell them that too. Yeah, PE teachers. Yeah, the PE classes. Yeah, yeah. The PE class. compulsory. Be, for sure, be funny. for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, man, the um, really great to hear you speak about those and your the impact that it's clearly has and has had and has on you, Elijah. Your your teammates. How have they been, like how many of your teammates have you got any of the Fords in there doing the uh, doing the burpees with you? Or is it all backs at the moment? <laughs> no, I actually got um I got a couple of Samoan Fords uh, doing it as well, you know, from back yeah, back home and all that. So they all well, the boys are getting huge. onto it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're, they're loving it as well. So um man, if I if I was to think about this a year year ago, like I would never expect um how things have panned out, you know, and like mm. to have I've actually got a lot of people, not just the rugby boys, but like people from yeah. different countries, you know, um, they're all awesome. jumping on, on board and everything like that. So um, I think it's a great little movement that we all got going on, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm. Awesome. How about the, what's your take on the community as a whole, Elijah? Have you found for you this burpee community, is it, is it different? Is it the same? If it if it's different to your circles and surrounding, obviously, which which it would have some differences. But uh-huh. in the in the I guess in the approach of the supportiveness of the community, have you found that as the community supportive in what you do, what you put out there with regards to burpees and that sort of stuff, and on your journey? Yeah. Look, um, no, it's 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 uh, it's definitely a positive effect. Um, for example, like ever since I started doing, well, ever since I started following Iron Wolf on Instagram and yeah. following his workouts and all that, I I was so surprised to see how many people were on the same same boat, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, for example, that's I think that's how I met Lee as well um, on there, and and just to see the community of people that've been doing burpees, and I just I just feel like that I personally know them, like I've never met them before, <laughs> but in a way. In a way, I feel like we we all relate together. Yeah, you know, we all on the same journey. We know how it feels. Um, you know, it's doing it's, it's just the classic blood, sweat, and tears. You know, just the grind, yeah. grind, grind. So I, I feel that we all relate in a way. Do you know what I mean? So absolutely. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's a great thing, man. To to see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, de- I definitely like felt the same as you with regards to. I mean, when I initially contacted you, it, 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 to me, like there was never any apprehension. Yeah. And exactly. saying I'm going to talk yeah. to this guy, he's a rugby player for France. He'll probably just he probably gets hundreds of fucking messages for women <laughs> and all that, and he's not interested in some ginger guy for Scotland <laughs> messaging him. But you just do it because you go, this guy does burpees, he'll, he'll get in touch. If I date burpees, he does burpees, he's going to answer yeah. me because we've been in the same boat at some point. Yeah. We've been in that 250 rep zone exactly. where we'll be making excuses in our head to stop doing burpees. Exactly. exactly. Do you know what I mean? So I definitely, the community is it's so close uh-huh. in yeah, that respect. Sure. Everybody's there to help each other because they, they've experienced a dark place together. Mm-hmm. 100%. So definitely 100%. an interesting point. But So when you talk about like you've walked up to 500 puppies, how do you actually structure your puppy training? Do you mm-hmm. just go in ad hoc or do you have a plan of attack? Which you... Yeah, I have a plan, mate. Like, so during lockdown, um, obviously there was no, no rugby. So then therefore there was no rugby training. Um, but I, I, I came with a plan where I'd wake up in the morning, I'd do my... I wake up at 5, 5.30 every morning. Um, I do my stretchy, my yoga. And then after that, that's when I'd start my burpees. I'd do it in the morning. So in the morning, I'd uh, start with uh, 100. And then obviously, throughout the days, throughout the weeks, I'll, I'll work it up. And I'll go up in 50s. So I challenge myself. I'd say one day, I'd say I'll, I'll go up in 50s. And then the next week, I'll go on another. I'll add another 50 on top of that. So I'd keep go- I'll keep doing that, I'd keep doing that, and it got to the stage where um, I wanted to do it in a set time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. my my ultimate goal when it came to uh, October was that I was going to do 500 burpees in one hour, oh under one hour. That was my ultimate goal. Yeah. Uh, before that, I'm working up towards the 500. I was 
I was doing about 400. I was doing 400. And I was getting, you know, that I was slowly working my way up and stuff like that. So then, um, mm. no, I, my, my plan was just straightforward, man. Wake up, stretch, and then just get into it, you know, like, no, maybe, you know, warm up a bit, but just just get into it, you know. Yeah. That's my, that was my philosophy in, in Burfies, man, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Have you stuck to love- exclusively, sorry, Joe. Have you stuck yeah, to right. exclusively burpees or have you indulged in any of the more like sort of high rep body weight circuits as well? Yeah, yeah. Option? So uh, obviously when I started with burpees, I I added like Navy SEALs, uh, <laughs> you know, you know the, the old Navy SEALs that, that kill us as well. <laughs> oh. um, so I kind of mixed it up. Every week I'd, I'd make, make now, like now where I'm at now, every week I'll make sure I'll do uh, two, uh, 500 burpees two times a week. And um, sort of in between that now and then, I'll do, like, you know, the pyramid, the one where you do yeah. 10 ones, 10 twos, all the way up to 10 and then all the way back down. So I'll, I'll mix it up. I'll mix it up. I won't just do right. necessarily burpees uh, every every week or something like that. I'll, I'll mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. It's great to hear, like, it seems like a very uh, structured systematic approach and do you, is that partly because or is that do you attribute that because of your professional sporting career and rugby and the structure that you guys have with the period yeah. sort of stuff is that yeah time? definitely I, I think so mate I think so um you know from a personal view man I was um I was quite young when I joined the professional environment so I was 18 years old so wow. you know by then um I started to learn about planning I started to learn about the structure there was so it was always a routine for me kind of like in the in the army and stuff you have a routine to set set time and stuff like that so i guess that's second nature for me man so i i've i've just gone used to it like uh, i don't even like you know i don't really have like a diary where i write a specific thing i just know it in my head they're like you know i've this is the time i wake up it's like it's like my body clock, you know, I know when I need yeah. to do something and stuff like that. So I've been sticking with that for years now and it's become second nature to me. So I guess uh, in a rugby sense, yeah, it's come from that. Beautiful. Mm. Awesome. And so your, with regards to your, your training, how are, are those, you know, that you said that you do your boobies and stuff on your days off. Are those, do you, are your days off consecutive? And so are those days, is it like how many days off in the week? Yeah, you? we usually get, um, so we'll train about Monday, Tuesdays, usually get Wednesdays off. Yeah. Thursdays is usually a training session. Fridays is usually just the captain's run. So yeah. Lee, a captain's run is like just a light session before the, the game the next day. And then obviously play the next day. Um, Sunday is usually a day off. Yeah. Uh, if I feel good on a Sunday, I, I'd, I'd smash our burpees. Uh, Monday is usually is training as well, but it's it's a lighter session, sort of just to yeah. get get you back into it. So I feel yeah. if I feel good, I, I'd add in burpees or something like that in, in that. But yeah. yeah, man, I just I just I just work around it. Um, if I feel good, I, I'll do it, you know. And um, if, well, it's been like uh, over a year now, so everything's gone, gone according to plan. Yeah, mm. awesome. Are you carrying any um, significant? sort of injuries you know because of all the bumps and knocks that you take with the bruising hits and all those sort of things the collisions and stuff in the game and with those do you find that they flare up or have they been have they impacted your ability with regards to burpees and that sort of stuff um, or you know obviously they're on the field as well yeah look um you know obviously when you play rugby you're gonna get bumps and bruises um <laughs> you know some weeks i'll get bigger ones some weeks um, <laughs> i'm okay man um, <laughs> Last year, I actually broke my nose last year, man. Like, um, oh, yeah, I tackled someone's knee. Yeah, my nose, <laughs> my nose, nose, I got like stitches <laughs> over here. My nose broke that way. And I was trying to, during the game, you know, I was trying to put it back, yeah. trying to like put it back together and stuff like that. Then the next day, my face is, face is like this, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was still grinding, man. I was still grinding. <laughs> the grind doesn't stop. Uh, I love off, love off. It's blood, sweat and tears. I, I'm, I'm going, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I envy that structure that you've got because my training regime is completely chaotic. No, no, I'd love to be in that situation where I could just have my yeah. days all strategically planned. And, but I'm, I'm at the top of my staircase just yeah. trying to bang out whatever I can in yeah, any yeah. given day. Yeah, 
You're an absolute machine, man. I want to congratulate <laughs> you on the uh, 100 burpees that you did in four yeah. minutes. Um, or 40 something. Or something. Minutes, that is crazy. I don't. Like, thanks very much. Man, people, yeah. if you. If people can understand how hard that is, then <laughs> yeah. geez, that's why I have a lot of respect for you, Lee. I just went uh, for it, man. I just had dad rage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, you, you you start to go on the um, you know, when you go into dark places. When yeah, you, that's when you you when you're doing the 100, you go into the dark places fast. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> when I was doing, when I was trying to do 100 as fast as I can, it was only up when I got up to 25. <laughs> that's when I was like, fuck, 75 to go, man. And I was just on autopilot, just, just doing it. And then at the end, I got cramps on my, on my feet. I got cramps everywhere. I was just laying down. And uh, to see Lee do it in four minutes, that is absolutely crazy. So, man, well done. Trust well done, day. champ. Thanks yeah. very much. That's, it's, it's an accumulation of being in that dark place for months. That allows you to just go for it, exactly. trying to get that 100. It's, it's something that, like, if you do it f straight off the bat or within the first month of your burpee sort of journey, it's, yeah. it's, no, ha it's no happening. The exactly. mental fortitude to go for those challenges, you need to have that dark place engagement in your toolbox 100%. a length of time. And you'll only get that through months and months of just hardcore burpee exactly. practice. Exactly. <laughs> However, as I yeah, say, yeah. before I had a two-year-old running in the room next to me, causing absolute <laughs> I chaos. Yeah. I thought I need to tend to them quickly, or something dodgy yeah, is going to yeah. happen here. So it's probably like the dad equivalent of performance yeah, yeah, enhancing yeah, yeah. drugs, a, which yeah. allow me to achieve that. Yeah. So I will never, I'll never be doing like it again. That. I won't yeah. be doing it again. All right. I, I can relate, Lee, because I've got a, I've got a four-year-old. <laughs> She's, uh, I got oh. a four year old daughter. She's half French, half French. Yeah, yeah. So there was one time when she was, um, because usually when I go and see her, I, I go to obviously go and see her in France and stuff. Yeah. And she stays with me. And then, um, when I, there was one time I was doing my burpees, yeah. doing 500. And I'm really like, I have, um, I'm like really, uh, like a perfectionist when it comes to burpees. Sure <laughs> every, from one rep to 500 is perfect. Yeah. Every count, every time I'm counting it, it has to be the right. Like, you know, right count. So, anyways, nice. I was about on what three hundred and eighty something. And then my daughter runs in, and then she's like talking because she can't speak English. She can only speak French, and she's like um, counting in French or something with her book. And then I lose count. <laughs> so every time in my mind, because I've you know I've got like I'm OCD or something like that with when it comes to counting. So I always every time I miss count, I'll punish myself and add a ten. That's how I see it, you know. It's my mental mentality. So she came in like three times, and then I'm just like trying to count while she's talking to me, and I'm, you know, and I was like, no, no, I've got to punish myself and do another ten. <laughs> Kids, eh? Yeah. So you're uh, having done five hundred and fifty burpees. Yeah. <laughs> it's a funny point that you bring up because you do always lose count and the panic that goes through your head oh, yeah. because you, you're not cheating particularly if you're doing it on a social media platform like YouTube and so forth well you know some guy's counting every rep yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got to put a comment you actually only did 498 so you find yourself <laughs> going back in numbers yeah, yeah, yeah. so you end up doing an extra 20 or 30 yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's, just, it's just torturing yourself. Mm, it is, it is, okay. exactly. Mm. Hey, hey, Elijah, what what have been the biggest takeaways? What would you say have been your three biggest sort of takeaways for you, uh -huh. benefits or takeaways that you've, that you've really gleaned from your burpee journey that you find help you either daily or they help you when you're in the grind or they help you in your day-to-day -day life or in your professional rugby career what have been three takeaways that you found man these these things i attribute to my burpee journey if if that exists it might not be three yeah look um i think for me the most important one um is that um it's actually a good quote actually it's called the, the quote i remember is like uh um oh geez what was it what was it let me think Life, life is about the journey. Life is not only about the destination. Life is about the journey. Meaning, um, when you're aiming towards a goal or a dream, not just in um, you know in sport, but in your daily, you know, just everyday goals or dreams that you aspire mm -hmm. to achieve. 
it's not the destination it's 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 the journey you know it's the journey that you go through you know like for me when i set out to say when i set out that i wanted to do 500 burpees um working up towards uh that 500 burpees i i learned a lot about myself in that journey you know i learned that i could push myself a, bit, a little bit further every day I learned that I, I I was becoming stronger. I was becoming mentally tougher as well. So that that's a that's a point. Like nice. when people want to achieve a goal, they they think that their sole focus is that goal, and then that's it. But it's it's what's between that. You know, you become that person. Mm. You become you become a stronger person. Yeah. Um. What else? You become wiser. You know. You you fall down. You get back up. All those things leading yeah, up to yeah, that yeah. you learn and, and you know and that stays with you and then that becomes a habit and you know and then you take positives out of that so nice. i've always attributed i think that's one of the big things that i learned from from this journey that i've had um yeah, yeah man i'd say definitely that yeah that's mm. cool i love how you how you spoke to that as well like that it's that journey process yeah the destination's great or the goal but that journey yeah. you know just the, it does change you eh? it changes you definitely like you, you can become more confident you become exactly. more aware of yourself and what you're capable of. Uh-huh. Um, I love how you've how you've summed that up, or how you've how you've spoken to those. For mm. anybody, large, I guess this sort of flows into my next question. What advice, or what would be some tips that you would give to anybody that's looking to start out on on their own burpee journey? Because I know of some people, just friends of mine that I know, they they look at it, they've look at looked at people like yourself, like the Iron Wolf, like Lee, like many others that I've, you know, sent them links, say, check out this, look at this person. Yep. They'll come and go, man, I could never do that. You know, I'm this and that, and, you know, I've, I've, I wouldn't be able to do something like that. What advice would you give to people that maybe have that mindset or that self-limiting mindset for themselves to help them encourage them along? I just think, um, you know, it's important to envision what they want and just to get started, I think, Getting started, that's a big step. Uh, I think that's really important because, and I always say to, because I get that question a lot as well, Mm. uh, work on yourself. Work on yourself, then you do your job. Work on yourself because at the end of the day, you matter. So, and your self-worth is important. So, um, sometimes, you know, it can it can sound selfish, but, you know, you've got to love yourself first as well, you know. So it's, if you, if you, if you want to, for example, you know, get into a fitness regime and all that, you've got to get started, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, just taking that first step, everything else will come. It's a journey, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's certainly doable. Anyone can, can do it. If you put your mind to it, if you put your heart to it, then it's possible for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Lodge. That's great, mate. The um, I'm going to sort of shift tack a little bit here. So did you ever... So are you... You, you mentioned you've got a daughter. Yeah. Um, and so are they... Is your partner and your daughter living in France, did you say, and you're in the UK at the moment? Or? Yeah, so I'm, I'm in the UK at the moment. Um, so I, I sort of see my my daughter when I can. Usually, like, I'll have her in the holidays, and um, after a game, I'd, like, for example, when I was playing here in England, after a game, I'd, I'd fly over. And that's when I'd do my burpees as well. So I'd fly <laughs> over, and so I'll have her for the weekend. And then uh, I'll do my burpees and everything like that. And then, you know, the day after, on a, on a Sunday Sunday night, I'll fly back, and then get ready yeah. for training on Monday. So yeah. that, was my, that was my routine. That was my routine. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and no, I look, um, you know, yeah. You know, she's what was that? No, no, okay. Oh no, I was just oh. saying. Um, no, no, she's. It's um, no, it works out well with my my planning and obviously seeing my daughter and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, it's really good. good. Have you, you got your burpees at the airport? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Liam. <laughs> no, I saw it on you go. <laughs> I you should. I should try it. Eh? <laughs> yeah. I hope you don't do them on the plane. For Christ's sake! <laughs> and the toilet, the bulky <laughs> high club. <laughs> <laughs> the burpee high class, my high class. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, they say you can do burpees anywhere, but I, maybe a airplane toilet would probably be stretching it a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Lee, I cut you off on that. And um, when I jumped in with that one, I was just saying, uh, like, like what I said there. I hope he doesn't do them on the plane. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I reckon. Does your partner do burpees with you? Is it? No, 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 no. Um, she does her own. Does I her probably own should. Thing. I probably should get her to 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 try it. Yeah, she does her own <laughs> thing, man. But um, she has a few times actually. So yeah, uh, it's been good. It's been good. Yeah, yeah. She's up to one hundred. She does a hundred. So. Wow. Awesome. The machine, man. Machine. It takes a brave man to train with a wife or partner. That's what I <laughs> takes a very brave man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's the what's probably you've achieved that five hundred and you've probably done more. Yeah. Have you got another? Have you got another goal yeah. in mind with regards to your burpees? Mate, yeah. Look, um, I remember on um, I think you probably would have seen Iron Wolf's video. I remember when I when I finished 500, I was so happy. Yeah. And then I think a week later, um, it was on Christmas. I think Iron Wolf did a live, a live YouTube 1,000. What was it 1,000 something burpees? Was it? And I'm just like, and I know what. Whoa, this guy's not human. So yeah, look, um, I, I I've actually set my new challenge. I want to get up to 1,000 awesome. uh, burpees. Have um, you have you got a date for that? I have. Uh, I want to do it by March 2022. Yeah. Reason yeah. being is that was the date that when I first started in 2020. Yeah. So I feel like yeah, man. if there's one day to do it, it's a reunion. Yeah. That day, oh. Two years later, two years and a bit later. Yeah. See, awesome. see if I was going to be like brutally honest with regards to how it went for me. I, f mm. I found the 500 to be more difficult than the 1000. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, de right. I definitely found that to be the case. I think that 500 is a, it's, it's a milestone in your head because it becomes so soon in your journey. It's that first number. Yeah. But exactly. y y your pacing sort of experience sure. and knowledge is probably not as refined. Yeah. And you're exactly. just, you've got it in your head. You want to get that 500. And you know yourself, when you go into these high number sessions, you're always yeah. going with a bit of fear and trepidation. Yeah, exactly. Do you know, it's not like when you're squatting heavyweight, you know you're only no. going to be doing it for like 10 seconds tops, 20 seconds. Yeah. But exactly. you know the burpees is going to take an hour, like 90 minutes, and you know yeah. you are going to be going through a world of pain. Uh -huh. exactly. exactly. So you're so nervous before that. Like, I've got one of my, 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 my good friends on Instagram, he was talking himself up and he doing a uh, thousand uh, burpees there, a fitness throstle. And he ended up doing thirteen hundred. Yeah. And I've been talking to him recently, and he's just he's he's told me himself. He's like, I don't know what to do next. I'm just like, I've done, once you do that high number, it's like, where do I go from here? Yeah. So I think that it's, it it can be mentally they're so mentally taxing at times, puppies, that That's when right. you 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 get that achievement, yeah, it's, it's like, what do I do? Where do I go from here? Yeah. Exactly. I found like, um, obviously like, you know, now I've been doing 500 for a while now. So mm. for me, um, I've always, every time I do it, I try and set a challenge to do every time I do 500 is to do the time less and less and less. Yeah. So that, that's the challenge I set myself. So now I like, I, I feel like now I feel like I can just do more. Yeah. Do more, so obviously that's why I've chosen a one thousand target, and now I'm gonna work towards nice. towards that. So, if we'll you get any way, if you get any sort of like idea how you're going to approach it, if you get like a, a rep scheme, you know how you always have a yeah, rep like, scheme in mind. Um, so, for example, when I do five hundred, I can do one hundred off the bat, and then I'll have a little rest at a good pace, consistent pace, mm. and then I'll have a little rest after the hundred, and then I'll do another hundred off the bat, and then I'll have a a little rest again and then i'll do another 100 so i'm up to 300 by then yeah and then after that i'll that's when i'm my, my arms are starting to, to feel it my legs and everything and then i'll go up in 50s so i'll yeah. do the same sort of rest count but i'll go up in oh. 50s yeah and then then that's four times 50 so then i'll that's how i'll reach the uh the 500 so I, you know i'm i, I kind of like feel feel confident that i could do uh, 100 rest 100 rest all the way up to 400 and then 50s and then i'll probably could carry on in fifties. Yeah. I feel like that's a that's an achievable goal for me personally. So yeah, awesome, man. yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And do you have your videos from when you, or do you did you video? Did you have any videos from when you first started? Um, that I you do. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. You should see how ridiculous I look <laughs> on my first shot. It's really, I look stuff. horrible. That's I'm actually going to post I should post that. You should. Way. That's the story. Like before, yeah, yeah, exactly. I should um, post that. Because I, I actually documented everything on um on, on my iPad. Like when I first oh, started, yeah. I videoed everything. And um, awesome. so I've got like a, a years and a bit worth of burpees on here. <laughs> well, maybe um, on your maybe on your reunion when you or the yeah, yeah when you do the sure. thousand maybe yeah then you put the exactly the, yeah, yeah that's for a, sure that's actually massive. a good idea yeah thanks for reminding yeah, me that'd that's, be cool. that's a really good idea yeah. It'd yeah. be great to see. Like Lee has mentioned um, when I was chatting with him and he was sharing, it's definitely like, we want to see that suffering. <laughs> see you, spill your guts up. And all this sort of stuff. <laughs> we want to see that. Like it's, and he's right. It's awesome. It's great to see. And you would think, oh, people are going to think I'm useless and this and that. But man, it's just been the opposite. Yeah, so 100%. Nobody right. wants to see some good looking guy just appear on the scene and do a thousand boppies and just walk back out. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to see that movie. I don't want to see that movie. That's a shit movie. <laughs> right. I want the cat. I want the I want the the the, the flopping about. Yeah. Look, look, you're trying to shag the hole in a dolphin's head. Yeah, I, I, I was. I was that mate. I was that. <laughs> First time I was doing, man. I I went from that. Then I was sort of body slamming the ground as well man <laughs> it was crazy man like I was, and then I, I think to myself I was like what kind of this doesn't look like iron wolf's uh, technique i mean, but you know body slamming i'll go up and i was like doing this doing i was all over the show man i was all over the show like, when i look back at it it's quite funny it's really funny yeah <laughs> Jeez. That's a crack up. I was yeah. just laughing, put, trying to picture it. Why is my chest so sore? I'm <laughs> yeah. slamming myself up into the ground. Boom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, I know. Then you watch a Boppies King and like Iron Wolf collaboration, and yeah. they're just doing these He's style of Boppies, and it's like, how, what the hell? You've just He's mastered trying. the one pump. And then you're watching this, and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta see him, Joe. Burpees King. Yeah, he literally like, just floats when he does every burpee, and it's just every slick, smooth. Oh, I know. He's a machine, hey, I've seen their their collaborations together, man. They yeah. Had, yeah, a couple of uh, machines there when they're doing their stuff. Yeah, up and down. Even just the warm up when I'm watching the video at the start, like yeah, Burpees yeah. King is doing this. Yeah, he's like pushing up reps. Yeah, boom, boom, like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> kick outs, kick outs, kick out, boy. And this is just the warm up, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. you guys are about to do 500, of me, <laughs> yeah. and you just worked out like 400 <laughs> yeah, push ups already. Exactly, exactly. Jeez. I know, I know. It's unreal. But Joe, I, I need I need to ask you, Joe. I mean, I, I noticed this week you you finally uh, managed to get three hundred in under twenty minutes, mate. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. That was um, that was such a good feeling. But you know what? I um, leading up to that because it's been frustrating. Like I, I wouldn't say I've been really close. Like when I look back at the other ones, when I've come close, I've got a couple of times twenty one minutes, forty something, twenty two minutes, and a whole bunch of other things when i look at it when i finish i think man so close but when i'm in the thick of it i'm like man that that thing is just a million miles away <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so to hit it uh just this week was was awesome uh and i have to admit like shout out to busy dad I'd, I'd seen him on a break at work i it popped up on my feed i had a look i was like man he's hit it again 19 minutes whatever he hit so I come away thinking about that. I've been doing a lot more running recently, so just added a bit more cardio to um, the toolbox. And I thought, man, I need to pick up a bit more cardio somewhere to help me. And then, uh, and then I had a good warm up actually, ten minutes, um, good warm up before it. I still didn't feel like I was going to be anywhere near hitting the three hundred in under twenty minutes. But uh, I noticed by the time I got to the halfway mark, I was quite a bit under ten minutes, and I thought. Oh, this is all right. I still feel I don't feel too bad. So then I kept going. Then when I got to 200, I was around about the 13 minute mark, and I thought, far out. I reckon I can get these last hundred. So <laughs> I uh, I started yelling a bit louder <laughs> from uh, <laughs> from 270 onwards. I don't know what happened. I think it was a I think it was a combination of uh, panic and uh, excitement and wanting to try to finish them because I was really hurting. Yeah. And then managed to managed to scrape in there with the 19 minutes 41 but that was such a good feeling yeah well done man to get through well that done. so um 
yeah, I was I was really quite happy with myself uh, to be able to get through that. And a shout out to Busy Dad for I think it was that that inspired me. Plus the happy socks I wear. These, uh, <laughs> I seen I the socks. These, yeah, I wear these socks with big smiley faces on them on Mondays nice. and Fridays. Performance enhancing <laughs> socks. <laughs> I want to start my week well, and I wanted to try to finish the working week well, and I think that's what helped. So, Joe, yeah. jo, jo, do you think the running was a, a, like a, a something that really took you to that level? Yeah, yeah, it is, man. Um, because I, I noticed I dropped off the running a bit just because my Achilles and stuff are, are yeah. a bit uh, dodgy, so the burpees doesn't seem to affect them too much, but I know the running has been. But I just couldn't, for me, I couldn't see another way of, of, of hitting that when I wanted to. Um, so I just thought, stuff it, I've got to get back and start doing some jogging and running and stuff again. And that's been really good. I haven't been running uh, long distance or anything, but I've been trying to keep the intensity reasonably high and doing sort of 20 minutes, anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes yeah. um, with a, at a decent clip on the running. So yeah. I definitely feel that's helped me over the last few weeks yeah. of adding that, adding that in. And I've only been, I would have loved to have run every day but just my Achilles and the, the pain that I feel in them, I just, I've just i been running probably three times in the week, maybe yeah. four times if I'm, if I'm feeling not too bad. So, yeah, that's definitely helped me. Yeah, I noticed how Iron Wolf keeps promoting running in his Q&As. Yeah. He talks about how important yeah. it is. And do you know what? With my fitness background, I know that an aerobic base is so important with recovery and allowing you to get those high numbers but it's something that I find very difficult to fit into my schedule but I know that it could take my performance up a notch if I was running I mean what about yourself Elijah do you run mm. as well on top do you how would you do to get that aerobic base yeah yeah look uh yeah for sure for sure running's obviously it's you know it's very important in rugby so I do you know now and then I'll do my own running as well but um yeah. at, just that rugby training man we're, we're running so uh, we're clocking up a lot of Ks by yeah. by doing field work and stuff like that. So, I yeah yeah I'd say that um, running is important as well for sure. Mm -hmm. What other cardiovascular thing? What other gym stuff is are you like in, interested in as well? Well, I just I see you know I notice in your your Instagram you post a lot of fitness related stuff and mm -hmm. I, I, I'm under the, I'm under the idea that you're actually like looking to get into a personal training or fitness coaching or something of that nature. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, uh, I'm also like a I'm also a qualified uh, nutritionist oh, and a wow. PT and strength and conditioner. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Earlier awesome. on in my rugby career, I was um, studying. I was doing study. I was studying the um, the nutrition you, and, yeah. and strength and conditioning on the side. So I I had that sort of knowledge mm -hmm. with me as well. Um, so I think that's a, that's a benefit because in a way I, I know I know. You know, I know my, what what's it about. I know what to do. I know what foods to eat. I know, you know, what exercises and, and things like that for, for athletes, for everyone. So yeah. I have that base knowledge of health and fitness. Mm. Is that something you're going to focus on when you, your career starts to wind down in rugby? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, um, that's, that's where I want to transition into. Uh, I feel like I've got another five or six years left, man, in rugby, man. Yeah. And then obviously the, when the body... Tells me that, you know, it's time to hang up your boots, old man. Um, then um, my mum, actually, she wants me to, <laughs> she's scared. She, every time she watches me play, she's like, oh, man, you, you hurt yourself a lot of times, um, you know. But, yeah, definitely, look, uh, strength and I want to be a strength and conditioning coach um, in a professional sports team. That's that's my goal for after after rugby, so I want to transition into that. Mm. Okay, I'm scared for any team that you do that job for. <laughs> I'm going to make all of them do burpees. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like a big punishment session constantly. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, but I haven't dropped the ball. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I was like that. Get down, we'll do burpees. Yeah. That's cool, man. And yeah. that's so good to hear that, you know, because you're still very, very young now, like with the being 31, you said, hey, Lodge. Yeah, just turned 31, yeah. And then, so you, when did you start your studying with your nutritionist, your strength and conditioning? How old, what uh, age were you when you were? So I was about, yeah, 18, 19. So like when I was playing yeah. rugby, they had like, because I was a rugby league player before. So in the NRL, yeah. they had a, a study program. So rugby players, 
it was free as well. So it was provided by the NRL. Oh, awesome. And I think that that's a good thing. So in my yeah. time, that's when it started. I think now it's more more out there. But um, back in yeah. my time, we were the sort of the first people that were part of that program where the NRL gotcha. provided uh, education on the side if you wanted it, if you wanted yeah. it. So, you know, me naturally, health and fitness is my passion. So I, I jumped on board and then started studying whilst I was playing rugby at the same time. So... Awesome. After three years, yeah, be, you know, became a qualified nutritionist and uh, strength and conditioning coach. So that's right. brilliant, man. Yeah, that's mm. that's really cool in terms of keeping one eye looking out in the future exactly. as well and being so aware at such a young age. For sure, to, exactly. to take that on board. So awesome work, man. Yeah, well done. definitely. Cheers. What's your nutritional approach to like your your fitness regime and burpees in particular? Does you feel that you you need to consume more calories because you've got this intense training regime on top of? Uh, training you do yeah, for yeah, definitely. I try and um, I try and balance it out, man. Like I, I don't want to. I'm not trying to be big or things like that. I'm I'm fairly big myself, like um, six three, uh, hundred and five kilos. But uh, so I'm I'm just trying to maintain, mate. So, in terms of nutrition, like I usually no, I eat fairly clean uh, uh, during the week. I'd have yeah. one cheat meal a day. Ah, uh, sorry, one cheat meal a week. <laughs> mate, so I take that back. I was like, I have a oh, cheat meal. Like, yeah. Sounds like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's all about balance, man. It depends, like uh, what your goals are. Um, if you want to, you know, lean up or you know yeah. put on muscle size or whatever it just it's just the individual but um yeah mm. what's your individual. cheat meal that's <laughs> what i know good question mate what's your cheat meal? my cheat meal is pancakes french toast Ooh. and uh shit loads of cream and ice cream and when it's my <laughs> nice. cheat day man I, I make the most of it like <laughs> yeah. but, Make the most of it. Um, it sounds yeah. good. <laughs> it sounds really I'm good. I'm quite hungry out. now. I'm thinking of yeah, it now, yeah. man. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's uh, it's only nine o'clock here, uh, and uh, I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm just thinking mm, that sounds really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then I'm thinking of the burpees I'm going to have to do after, and I know I'll be tasting those if I if I go and have that first. <laughs> what's, what's the burpees you've got planned today, Joe? Oh, the purpose I've got planned today is uh, I want to do 500 um, double eight count bodybuilders. So I did uh, 300 yesterday. Um, unbroken. unbroken. That, that felt all right. So I'll uh, do, <laughs> do double felt all right. eight. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So that's the plan for today. What about, what about, what did you do today? What did you do today, Lee? What were you, what was your session? Uh, listen, I, uh, I've been dying with the cold, as you know, so my training oh, has taken right, yeah, a yeah. massive hit as of late. I've not been able yeah. to train. Uh, I've had like this cold, it's re-emerged over the week. There's some virus going about Scotland right now or the UK. Yeah, well, right. like kids are developing RSV or something. I don't know what it is. But my daughter passed it on to me, so I was incapacitated. But tonight, I thought, tonight. you know what? I'm just going to go for it. So yeah, I did, uh, I did a hundred burpees, but I did like one pumps, two pumps, three pumps, Navy Seals, four pumps, and then nice. repeated that. And I was completely blown out of every hole in my body. <laughs> <laughs> I was coughing all the way up to this podcast. I thought I'm not going to be able to do this podcast. I can hardly breathe, and I was just coughing constantly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it's like the burpees are addictive do you know what I mean yeah, I could be fucking is. dying and I'm like I need to do burpees I've got to lose all my gains yeah I feel you <laughs> I feel you yeah. what about you lads what did what did you do today or is today a recovery day or rest day or are you doing some tonight mate actually I just got back from Ireland I was oh, uh, in Ireland for a couple of days I uh, went to nah visa <laughs> oh visa <laughs> had to get... yeah mate <laughs> it's crazy man like <laughs> If there's something that, uh, actually, I got, I got um, a little kid asked me a funny question like last week. He was like, "Oh, yeah. who's, which rugby players tackle you the hardest?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, the UK immigration people. <laughs> <laughs> They've tackled me the hardest, man. It's just a constant thing, yeah." But I had to go there. Normally, I had to go to New Zealand to um, do my visa, come back. But yeah. obviously, New Zealand's closed their borders yeah, for New yeah. Zealand citizens, so I had to go to Ireland to do it. But um, actually, oh, yeah. I was, uh, yeah, actually did burpees uh, last uh, last night in Ireland in my hotel nice. room. So, um, what was that one? Sorry, what was that session in your uh, hotel in Ireland? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just did the five hundred. 
Yeah, and it was awesome. it was it was really cold too in Ireland, by the way. Um, but it was nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, after well, this, I'll just warm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, steaming. <laughs> but um, after this, I'm just gonna rest a bit, and then tomorrow get back on the horse. Mm. Awesome, back on it. Mm. Awesome, man. That's great. What um, I, I might have already asked you, and Lee probably pulled me up as well if I have, but. The your involvement in the community in this burpee community, uh-huh. how do you see, like, what? How do you see your your place within it? Do you feel like you have a place within it? I guess is what I'm leading to. And if so, why is that? Why do you feel? Does it feel inclusive to you? It sounds like so far it does. Like just the way that you two connected and were able to mm. just reach out to each other. How do you find that? sort of environment is that the case for you do you feel included in it do you feel like it's um do you feel and did you feel weird at first when you were putting your videos out there of the burpees and stuff that you're doing or the training that you're doing in any way yeah look um you know i guess um you know from the when i first started doing burpees and first started to sort of put it up on my instagram and, and things like that because I came from a rugby rugby community, so I was yeah. always with the boys, you know, I was yeah, always with, yeah. the, you know, with the rugby thing. So this is, obviously, it's, it was brand new to me, you know, this is the first time mm-hmm. ever I've actually, I wouldn't say gone, gone away from the rugby environment, but this is the first time that I've um, jumped into something different that I wasn't used to. Mm-hmm. And obviously, throughout the throughout the months, you know, throughout the year now, I've, I've noticed that, shit, you know, there's another community of people that share the same same passion that I found. Mm. So I, I feel like, um, yeah, definitely, I, I feel like I'm very much part of this um, uh, community. Obviously, I, I met Lee, uh, Lee through through this as well, and Iron Wolf, and that. And I think that, to be honest, I think this is just going to get bigger and bigger. And I hope it does. I hope it does. I really do because I think this is a great thing for for us, um, for, for you know, for anyone that wants to be included. Yeah. I think it's a great thing. It's a great movement. It's good for your mental health, and um, look, I, I just, I just hope it carries on the way it is. Yeah, I think one thing that's going to carry the the Buppy community myself is that because it's been locked down, like so, exactly. uh, it's, it's something that's gained prominence through the lockdown. For sure. uh, I think you're going to start to see the transformations coming through. The, the, the people that have, I mean, for example, there's a guy in Scotland who I've just connected with and he has just raised £24,000 for charity by doing burpees every day. And he started off like doing, a bu- it's like 365 days of burpees. He started off at one day, one burpee, two days, three days. So he's done like something like 63000 and so forth. But the guy's physical transformation is incredible and all he's been doing is burpees. Yeah. He's completely ripped. His shoulders are jacked. <laughs> I'm looking at him going, Jesus Christ. And I think that's going to start to gain prominence. And yeah. that is what's going to suck people in. The exactly. transformations. People are going to see the... Because, like, m- my story is that, like, the transformation that happened with me physically was mind-blowing in my eyes. I'd never seen anything uh-huh. like that. And if it happened for me, then, uh-huh. like, it's... Once people start putting themselves out there, the before and afters and that start coming out, I think that's going to be a big driver of getting people towards puppies. Because... Yeah. Like like Lige said, it was it's viewed as a punishment, so it's a very hard sell at this mm-hmm. point. Like some of us just like latch onto that Iron Wolf things because he draws you in himself. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes you need more than that to get more people in. Exactly. And once people start to see the physical transformations that have like, mm-hmm. manifested themselves, I think that's going to be a big sort of magnet for a lot of people. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh, definitely, definitely. Right, and I'm. You know, for me, I, I'm happy to play my role, you know, and just mm. doing what I love and continuing what I'm doing. And yeah. I feel like if I carry on doing that, then I'm playing my role in this, uh, yeah. you know, in this community that awesome. this movement that started. So uh, I'm more too happy to carry on what I'm doing. Yeah. What physical sure. track? Did you notice any like difference in your physique and so forth by yeah, utilizing look, puppies? Man, I became. I became much stronger. If you see my videos, I started doing like fitness challenges and things like that. Yeah. And I credit all that to uh, the, the burpees. Like I do, when I first started doing the standing rollouts, yeah. I, could never, I couldn't even do that on my knees. 
up until I when I started doing burpees, I just became strong all around. I became fitter and everything. And yeah, man. And um, in terms of the transformation, I feel my my weight stayed the same as before, but I've become more ripped, yeah, so, so to speak, yeah, than, yeah. than before. Yeah. So, um, and I credit hundred percent credit that to burpees. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't no agree doubt more. About that. Yeah. I think exactly. once people realise as well that the, the, the sort of muscle building benefits of burpees, yeah. that's something that people, once they realise that, like Navy SEALs are probably one of the best shoulders yeah. and chest builders that I've ever seen or I've ever used myself. Yeah. And once you can exactly. sell a burpee down that road to the, like, the, the, the bodybuilder crew. Yeah, 100%, 100%. International chest day. <laughs> <coughs> oh so good man guys i've um i've taken a lot from what you've mentioned and shared with us so far here large and i and i know and looking forward to connecting and hearing more and seeing more of the journey definitely we want to see the uh the thousand uh, yeah thousand for sure burpees. That absolutely be, yeah that'd be brilliant man and yeah. um really appreciate uh your time that you've been sharing with us today man we've uh We've gleaned a lot and uh, had a good laugh together. And I love the fact that you feel part of this community uh -huh. and, and that you have a significant role to play. And I think that's the beauty about, from my perspective, just to try to echo some of your guys' comments and thoughts as well, is that we all, regardless of where we're at in our journeys, we all have a, a place within this community. That's what's really stuck out to me. That's what exactly. I really feel. Yeah. And having the privilege to connect with people like yourself, Elijah, and Lee and all the others that we will soon have and those that we've only just connected with via just sending a, a message, an uplifting message or replying mm -hmm. to a positive uplifting message that we've received is all part of just, I guess, the positive impact that this community has had on me and it sounds like it's had on you as well, Elijah, and I'm just grateful that we've had this time to uh, to connect with you. you. I don't, personally, I don't have any more questions at this point in time, but I know Lee might still have some <laughs> and you might have some, so I'm, I'm keen to listen in and hear any more. Otherwise, we'll look at look at wrapping it up, but appreciate your time, Elijah, and everything that you're doing. Wish you all the best um, from Thank my you. side with regards to your professional career uh -huh. and hope that it continues to be, you know, as many years as you want it to be. And uh, I know that we're uh, we're blessed to have you as part of this community, brother. I really appreciate you and respect. Thank you very much. I just want to add on to that, uh, guys. I just I just want to give you guys props for what you guys are doing. I think um, you know doing these uh, chats and that this just brings out a lot of positivity. Like this is the first time I've I've actually talked on a podcast and all that. And when Lee hit me up about it, I, all of a sudden I was just like <laughs> I just felt drawn to it. You know, like I've done interviews here and there for for rugby and stuff and, yeah, and stuff, but this. Like in a way, this meant a lot to me. That's yeah. why when, when Lee hit me up, I was like, "Man, I'm in there," you know. So and that says some that says a lot, um, and you know that that's because of the passion that I have. And with you guys mm. doing something like this, I'm just all too happy to be a part of it. So I think I thank you both, eh? And um, to everyone listening, um, you know, this is a great channel, and um, I hope that this will continue. This movement that you guys are doing will continue to grow, grow, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing the progress that you two are doing so I really thank you guys that. i thank you very much thank you and i just want to say, like I, I i'd like to thank yourself for coming on because like yeah. i think like a guy like yourself in the position you are you, you've got you're in a good position to be able to spread the the, the bird mm -hmm. piece or our community out there and so forth uh you're quite an inspiring character i see that you've you've got a charity thing happening right now yeah uh, look, you want to... yeah for sure so um uh, I'm part of a charity called Strong Gens. So there's a few of us athletes here in London. We are raising awareness and raising funds to help uh, children in war-torn countries like uh, Afghanistan and Lebanon to uh, help relocate them into a new, a better society, a safer yeah. environment, and to provide education and awesome. and housing for them. So I've been we've been part of that. I've been part of that for a few months now. We've raised um, some funds. And um, on the 31st of um, this month, next Sunday, that's when uh, that's the last day of the charity. So, uh, how can look, people how can people contribute to that, Lodge? Sorry. So I have a I, yeah on my Instagram on my bio, I have a link, 
and um, there's all the information about what we're doing, and um, yep. it shows up to date of uh, of the children as well that we're looking after and things like that. So you can, if you see it on my on my bio, on my Instagram, you'll see all information about that. I think it's a it's a really good thing, you know, and I hope that people 100%. can see that. Mm. And your Instagram, just for everybody, can you confirm that so that they know where to find you? Because we'll put yeah. that in the links and stuff as well. Perfect. But where can where can we connect with you? So my Instagram is at Elijah Nico. So um, Elijah yeah, Nico. you guys will see it on the on the bio. Yeah. So happy awesome, days. man. That's beautiful. Yeah, we'll see that. Are there any other links where people can connect with you? Or is that the main one? Uh, I think, yeah, that, that, that's the main one for me at the moment. Um, I, I've actually just recently um, done a YouTube uh, channel. Um, nice. So it's uh, it's the same thing, Elijah, Elijah Nico. Nico. Yeah, awesome. so that's right. uh, that's my new one. So I want to start we'll posting some burpee uh, videos as well. So get them up, mate. Get them up. Get them up. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll pump that as well. We'll, we're going to awesome. put that in the description and with everything that we're going to be posting out on the podcast and on the YouTube channel for here. Um, that's fantastic, mate. A great cause. Uh, we definitely want to support that. that, and so we'll we'll add those in there and guide people towards that. Um, awesome, brother. Thank you for that. Sorry, Lee, I cut you off. You were probably going to wrap up with a few. Things. No, no, that's me. I'm. I was happy oh, yeah. with that, man. That's, I'm like really pleased that we managed to get that in at the end as well. The charity thing. I think that's a yeah. I want the cause. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate 100%. that. <laughs> well, Cheers. thank you very much, Large, again. Respect, brother. Appreciate you giving of your time. It's not easy, I would imagine, Absolutely. Um, being a professional athlete and making time for a couple of plebs, amateur <laughs> burpee plebs nah, like us. Well, so we really appreciate well, it. Well, <laughs> thank you, Lance. I appreciate that. Awesome, brother. Great well, you take care. All the thank very you. best. And we look forward to reconnecting with you again. Uh, awesome. Cheers. All right. I'm gonna...